Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm really enjoying being back in Hong Kong again. Uh, I used to come here very frequently in the 90s, but much less so in the noughties. But, um, I, but I go through your airport about every two weeks, but every two months, so, so it's nice to be back in town. Um, thank you for uh, listening to me. Some of you may have heard me the other day. I tried to make all these interventions different. Um, what I'd like to do today is to talk um, briefly about what the Commonwealth of Learning does, but stopping on those areas where I think that there might be some interest on your part because there is a link to um, the sort of intensive use of IT in education and dwell a bit on the issues of uh, IT in teacher education. But my point really is to put out some some, some ideas, some points, some issues that you might want to come back to in the discussion. So this was entitled The Role of uh, Technology in In-Service Teacher Education. We'll touch on that, but I'll try and go a bit wider. So first of all, something about the Commonwealth of Learning. Uh, the Commonwealth of Learning is an intergovernmental organisation, that is to say, created and supported by the governments of the Commonwealth of which there are 54, and we're based mostly in Vancouver and partly in New Delhi. We're very small, total staff about 40, and what we do is to help Commonwealth governments and institutions use various technologies to improve and expand education, training and learning in support of development. Our strap line, as you saw, is learning for development. Uh, the program is very simple in structure. We range, as you'll see, over pretty well the whole um, area of learning at different levels uh, by dividing ourselves into two sectors, an education sector, which has four activities, and I'll take you through those briefly. Um, the first is open schooling. I talked about this the other day. This is an attempt to use distance learning and technology to address the dire problem of the millions of children who are not getting secondary school. So much emphasis has been on primary schooling in the last 20 years that there's now a problem as all these children complete primary school and look for something else. The interesting project there, which we might want to come back to, is that we are developing a complete senior secondary curriculum as open educational resources um, working together with the countries of Trinidad and Tobago, Seychelles, Zambia, Botswana, Namibia and Lesotho. The idea being that each country produces open educational resources for some subjects and then they can share them, adapt them and use them in their own countries. The idea being to increase the quality of the learning materials available for the senior secondary curriculum um, both for open schooling but also in the regular classroom situations. Teacher education is obviously the, uh, and that's that area of open schooling is run by Francis Ferreira who came to us after many years as head of the open school in Namibia. Um, the area that perhaps of most interest to you is teacher education headed by Abdurrahman Umar who came to us after being for a number of years the academic director of the National Teachers Institute in Nigeria, which is the world's largest um, operation of teacher education at a distance, with well over 100,000 um, teachers being trained there. The challenge there is to do something to help with the training of the 10 million new teachers that are needed around the world um, in the next five or 10 years to address a number of, of pressing issues. Um, in the specific IT area, um, Abdurrahman is involved in a project to develop open educational resources for the teaching of English. We're involved in an online green teacher diploma with the Centre for Environmental Education in Andhra, India, which is an attempt the Indian Supreme Court has directed that all Indian children must be educated about the environment, which obviously creates a massive challenge of teacher education. So this Green Teach Diploma is meant to address that. There's a quality assurance toolkit for teacher education that we developed some years ago 
with the National Assessment and Accreditation Council in India, which seems to be spreading very nicely. And I shall talk this afternoon, and I've talked previously about the TESSA program, which is a program, a consortium of um, 13 African universities, the British Open University, and various international bodies, including ourselves, to produce open educational resources for school-based, classroom-focused teacher education in four languages, Kiswahili, Arabic, English, and French. And these, of course, because of the nature of open educational resources, can be adapted to local needs. And they were being used, it's very hard to know the exact numbers because countries that aren't in the program are using them spontaneously, but somewhere between 300 and 500,000 teachers in Africa were using these materials. And because they're classroom focused, we believe that millions of children in their classrooms are also benefiting from this. So we might want to come back to that a bit later, but let me just go on through the program briefly. Our higher education program is mostly focused on improving the quality of higher education, most especially where it uses distance learning or ICTs. Um, the problem with the developing world is that they cannot afford the kind of complex and um, quite expensive quality assurance structures that you have in Hong Kong with the Accreditation Council and in most of the developed countries. So we've come up with what we think is a, is a much less expensive but nevertheless effective do-it-yourself model for quality assurance. And finally in the education sector a very interesting program called the Virtual University for Small States of the Commonwealth. I should have said that of the 54 states of the Commonwealth, 32 are small states with populations of 2 million or less, often much less. Let's say Shell, for example, has a total population of about 85,000. And these countries obviously have particular challenges. So their ministers got together 10 years ago and said that in order to join the e-world on equal terms, they would need to work together. So they created this thing called the Virtual University for the Small States of the Commonwealth, which, contrary to its name, is not a new university, but a collaborative network by which these countries can work together to produce e-learning materials in areas of importance. Um, we've developed a number of areas so far, and the model we've evolved is to bring the specialist academics from the countries that are interested in that area to one of the small states for a three-week what we call boot camp where they both learn the IT uh, techniques needed to do online collaboration and then start developing the course. This one was held in Mauritius and some 16 countries got together to develop a diploma in tourism and entrepreneurship. Tourism, you'll understand is quite an important issue for these small states which often have rather significant tourist industries. 